Hello, I am Dr. Deepti and we are discussing the experiment counting statistics. So, radioactivity as we all know is a random phenomenon. So, it is not possible to predict when say a radioactive nucleus for example, a carbon radioactive nucleus will be decaying. However, in a sample containing several radioactive nuclei of the same kind, we can study the statistical distribution of the phenomenon that is the probability of certain number of decays taking place in a given time interval. A large number of readings say 100 or even say up to 300 need to be taken in order to apply any statistical model to empirical data. The beta sources used in this experiment are chosen such that they have a sufficiently long half time so that the exponential decay in the activity for a few hours during which the experiment is performed can be neglected. So, this allows us to study purely statistical fluctuations. Now, the central piece of equipment to this experiment is the Geiger Muller tube that is used for detecting and counting the beta particles. So, what is this Geiger Muller tube? Basically, it consists of a metallic cylindrical cathode K and an anode say A in the form of a thin straight wire along the axis of the cathode. It is generally a tungsten wire of diameter of about 0.01 millimeter in order to produce a high electric field near it for a given potential difference. The anode is given a high voltage by means of high tension supply through a resistor. The anode is connected to an electric counter through a capacitor. It could be say of uh, the order 500 picofarad. The region between the anode and the cathode is known as the active region. The entire anode cathode assembly is housed in a glass tube with a thin window W you can denote it say to allow high energy particles to enter in the tube. So, now you can visualize the circuit. The tube is evacuated and filled with a mixture of an inert gas say argon at about 10 centimeter mercury of pressure and a quenching gas say ethyl alcohol or halogen at 1 centimeter Hg pressure. When no ionizing particle enters the tube and gas is in a neutral state, the anode is at a potential Va with respect to the cathode and therefore the capacitor C is fully charged. When an energetic charged particle enters the active region through the window, it produces one or more ion pairs in the gas. This leads to a Townsend avalanche and the creation of a large number of ion pairs near the anode wire. So, this is known as Geiger discharge. The electrons thus generated in the gas reach the anode very fast in about a microsecond causing a momentary current pulse in the resistor R. This decreases the anode potentials which uh, is the same as that of uh, the left plate of the capacitor by a corresponding amount. A voltage pulse thus travels through C from the GM tube to the counter. It is fed to an amplifier and a discriminator. When the pulse height is larger, then the threshold level set by the discriminator is counted as 1. In this process, a positive space charge collects around the anode. Since the positive ions are massive, they take a longer time to travel to the cathode, which is a few hundred microseconds. The time taken by the positive ions formed near the anode to travel to the cathode is called the dead time. In the meantime, the current pulse dies out 
and the anode capacitor voltage is restored to its original value through a resistance capacitance combination rc combination now that it, this happens in the duration which is known as recovery time so when a positive ion reaches the cathode the electron from the metal whose energy is nearing its fermi level recombines with it releasing an energy now here that energy you can denote it by say ei minus phi where ei is the ionization energy of the gas atom molecules and phi is the work function of the cathode if the difference in energy is larger than the work function that is ei minus phi there is a possibility that an electron from the cathode may acquire it and it may be released in the active region of the tube this would trigger another geiger discharge before the first one has subsided and the process would go on indefinitely the second gas ethyl alcohol is added to stop this process and hence is also called a quencher so this gas should be such that its molecule has a uh, smaller ionization energy when an argon ion meets an alcohol molecule on its way to the cathode an electron is transferred from the latter to the former neutralizing the argon ion and ionizing the the alcohol molecule the ionization energy of argon is 15.7 electron volt while that of alcohol molecule is 11.3 electron volt thus all ions reaching the cathode are alcohol ions which fail to eject electrons from the cathode the energy difference is rather used up in dissociating the alcohol molecules so this effect is basically quenching of the discharge the charge and therefore the pulse builds up during the during a certain time period which is called dead time of the tube we have already spoken about the recovery time and the total period is the paralysis time of the assembly during which the tube is unable to count any other particle so basically the counts that we get need to be corrected for paralysis time which in our second uh, in our case is around 250 microsecond now if another charged particle enters the gm tube during the period time period that time it merely causes some more ionization and the second pulse which is weaker would overlap with the first one the situation in the situation is such that the particles are registering only one count thus the number of counts registered by the counter is smaller than the number of ionizing events which must have taken place in the tube therefore we have to apply the paralysis time correction and this correction factor increases with increasing strength of the source a high cathode to anode voltage is applied in the gm tube so that the height of the voltage pulse generated is independent of the energy of the incoming charged particle or the number of ion pairs initially produced by it in the gas it is therefore useful only for counting the number of charged particles entering the gm tube in fact it can count even low energy particles which cause extremely weak initial ionization however it cannot be used to analyze the energy spectrum of the incoming particles or to identify them so basically a good gm tube should have should show in fact a flat plateau in the characteristics that is a graph of the number of counts versus anode voltage but the gases leak out of the gm tube with time distorting its characteristics the flat plateau turns into a sloping line in that case so this factor in fact limits the life of the gm tube